Welcome to You Ought to Watch This Movie, the podcast about movies from the first decade of the 2000s, a.k.a. the aughts. Follow along and explore a movie from the aughts, getting unbridled opinions from two millennials. Sit back, relax, and enjoy one of the best decades in movies. Welcome back to You Ought to Watch, and I may have just eaten an entire half pack of Thin Men's Girl Scout cookies. I'm Miles. I'm Colin. And we're here to give you unbridled opinions about a new movie we watched. Yep. Why am I whispering? Is it a secret? No. Oh. It's not. Well, what movie are we going over today? <sighs> it's called Hanging Up. And again, it's from 2000. This released in or on February 18th, 2000. Um, and I was, I had high, um, I don't want to give things away, but I had high hopes for this movie because it had three big names as leads and I'm just not sure that it, you know, delivered, but I will give you a summary. All right. A very Let's... simple summary with also a, an, I like an attachment. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Um, three sisters try to, to stay connected while their father is in the hospital. And the attachment is, um, this is called hanging up because throughout the entire movie, the sisters and their dad continue to hang up on each other on the phone. I did not realize that that was a part of it, but. That makes sense now. And it's not because, I mean, it's not like they hang up because they're mad. It's just like, oh, you know, we're busy. We hang up. We're done talking. Do you want to give your disclaimer now? That you should watch this movie if you do not want to have spoilers or, you know, be surprised yeah. by a movie that's 23 years old. You can rent it for, what, three and a half bucks on what? Amazon Prime? Yes. And, um,. I'm not sure if it's available elsewhere. If it were available, you probably would have. Oh, it's a it's streaming on stars. Okay. So, so if you have stars, you know, you still pay for stars. Um, by all means, you can watch it there or three and a half buckaroos at the Amazon prime store, not the physical location, the actual online location because they don't rent uh, DVDs out. <laughs> well, uh, they still have Redbox, So I guess they do. They're not going to find this in Redbox because it's yeah, too old. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, they should have a classics Redbox. Yeah. That'd be neat. Yeah. So you gave the summary. Mm -hmm. So do you want to start off uh, with your trailer thoughts? Yes. Um, oh, just... by the way, the um, imagery is because we are dressed up for Easter. You will likely be hearing this on uh, Friday after Easter. So, or two Fridays. Or two, probably one. But uh, is Happy Easter, you know, from us to you. And that is why she looks so great. And I look, you know, a little um, uh, better than bad. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, my thoughts from the trailer. Um. We had to skip three movies to get to this one. Mm -hmm. We won't tell you which ones we skipped. Because we may or may not decide to come back later and do like bonus episodes. Yeah. But needless to say, as we are being more picky just because we want to enjoy the movies. And we, if you can hear in the background, there's a bunch of cats. Well, two. Yeah. One is being chased by another. Poor soul. Since you brought up we're being picky, Miles, I put Miles is being too picky as we after we you know skipped three movies. And when he acted like he didn't want to watch this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was excited about the three big name actors who we'll say in a minute. And I think it uh, I think it will be cute. And I like the song in the trailer, which I forgot to look up 
what it is. Well, while you're doing that, I'll give my trailer overview. So this trailer seeks to focus on the inner workings of three sisters and their promiscuous father. <laughs> I'm intrigued with the concept of the trailer, uh, given the semantics of three leading female actresses, where the likely outcome is family focus rather than feminine bravada. Okay. Is that your only thought? Yeah. Oh, well, I the song that they played, which made me think I need to watch it because the song is played in so many movies. What is it? This Will Be by Natalie Cole. This will be an everlasting love. What's the rest of it? I'm not going to sing the whole song. Well, you started in No, that, that was just the part people will know. Well, now that's the only part in my head, and I don't know the rest of it. Well, you can figure it out later. <laughs> and this trailer had a voiceover, right? It did have a voiceover. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. I mean, if you wrote it down, it likely did. <laughs> well, I wrote it down after the fact, but I, I'm pretty sure that it did have a voiceover. Well, in some parts. Yeah. If I'm wrong, sorry. Sue me. Usually no, more prepared. Don't sue me. <laughs> okay. So now we get to the actors we know, mm -hmm. recognize from things. And first, so the big name people, Meg Ryan, which everybody will know, but I'm not going to list every single thing. But um, the big ones are You've Got Mail and Sleepless, you've got mail. Sleepless in Seattle. And a bunch of other movies. Mm -hmm. um, Diane Keaton, another, you know, I'm not going to list everything. Um, I know her from a movie called Because I Said So, which we will probably be talking about okay. on this podcast. Very cool. And also she was in Father of the Bride, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Yes, Father of the Bride, she was. Who else? Um, Lisa Kudrow, who everyone will know from Friends. Lisa Kudrow. Oh, that's the one I thought was from Rust Development. Uh -huh. okay. And she was also in Space Force. <laughs> and we also recognized the... Uh, oh, great. Now I have to look up what the character's name was. Um, her real name is Celia Wat Watson. Uh, Watson? The, Watson. That's a weird thing to say um oh, stop it stop 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 what's in your mind huh what <laughs> I mean, i'm i'm saying you can think of it what's in your mind what's in oh come on so her character name was madge turner okay. but we recognized her because we'd just seen her on an episode of modern family mm, she yes. played cam's mom cameron's mom um, and also something that you'll find funny because I just figured it out before we started recording, mm -hmm. um, Clois Leachman, who played, um, the girl's mom. Okay. Was in that, um, or Cloris Leachman, sorry, Cloris Leachman, who played their mom and she was in that movie on the office that andy had jim and pam watch with jack black and the older lady oh yes I that was her that. the old lady yes oh my god <laughs> that was such a disturbing movie <laughs> so anyway thought that would be funny so those are all the people we we knew uh-huh all right so on to comments i guess sure is my first comment was wow this is a heavy reality on taking care of parents like just blah you know it's like kind of sad because this guy's going through dementia and he is having trouble remembering his daughter and you know just um but then it led uh, shortly you know after like realizing what his uh, um affection is you realize, oh, no, no, back to the trailer. You know, he's a promiscuous old guy with no mind because he's hitting on his daughter at one point. <laughs> Saying, you're such and such. Oh. 
Okay, well, at first I said this is my kind of movie. It's lighthearted. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's like it's like some of them we watch. Yeah. But I also mentioned I like that they are making light of an aging parent because mm-hmm. that is like a heavy thing and it was just nice to kind of laugh and... Because if you can't laugh about things, then things will probably be really depressing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the kid uh, making noises on the airplane or whatever. You remember? Not really. There's a kid, like, towards the beginning, just making obnoxious noises on an airplane. I don't remember an airplane. At the very beginning. Well, Continue. Maybe maybe it wasn't. I I'm pretty sure it was an airplane. They were sitting somewhere, and the kid was just making loud, obnoxious noises, like ah, or something. Okay. I I put down that kid reminds me of me. Oh. Because I'd make random obnoxious sounds in a place. Um. Let's see. So uh, as the movie progressed, I really I realized that the main character is Meg Ryan because it's all about her and her relationship with dad and how she's having to take care of everything while her two her older and younger sisters are, you know, off doing their own things and One of them not wanting Uber's to deal with all. them. Yeah, and. Or possibly she just thinks she's uber successful. It's hard to tell. She's very self-absorbent. Yeah, yeah very, very much so. Um, <laughs> Idiot. Because it's uh, obviously a made-up magazine that we've never heard of. So. Oh, I want to make myself a magazine. I'll just call it Miles. And you can read it all about me. Pass. <laughs> all right. So, and, um, let's see, I, one of my thoughts was that I kind of felt like Diane Keaton was too old to play, like, the older sister. Yes, absolutely. Because in just, like, a couple years, she plays a, well, and even, like, in the 90s, she played a mother and father of the bride, and now she's playing someone's older sister, and it just. How much older is she? I don't know. Well, if you're to look at the picture, she looked, you know, like probably 10 years older than the rest of the crew, at least. But, you know, if you ask her age, and I'd imagine it's two. Okay. Well, um, at a point, and I actually realized that they were just trying to show, like, all these flashbacks. So, but at one point, I made a joke, like, oh, they're showing Christmas. They're playing Christmas music. This must be a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like when Die Hard comes into scene and you realize it's a winter party. Yeah, but I'm. But it wasn't because they showed all kinds of flashbacks. So it was just one little piece of their of their lives. But um, don't you have any other comments? Yeah, I do. Okay, right. you you have a comment then. Say it. So the chick's husband, um, who is, uh, um. Oh, uh, what was he being a dick about? Oh, and then I had to tell you that you were wrong about that. Okay, what? You were mad because at one point she was on the phone with her di- dad and he said, you know, he's not allowed to ever come back here. And, uh-huh. and he was being upset that she was on the phone all the time, that he kept calling her. Mm-hmm. And you said that you were being so upset about that. And he... And you thought that was so rude. But then when we saw the flashback as to why all of that happened, I thought the husband was just being a good husband and protecting his wife because of that whole scene where the birthday party and... But he is here. What? I'm confused. Yes. Okay. Repeat the last sentence. He was mad about that flashback that happened when the kid had his party at the house and her dad showed up drunk and called her and said, oh, and that's oh, why he said he's never oh, coming here again oh, because okay. he was so 
rude to yeah 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 to that, her. And then later in the movie it is uh, that's whenever it illustrates it. Okay, yes. okay. I was thinking about what I you know had mentioned and during that time, and is just the back and forth they were having. I know, but that was after the fact, and so yes, I'm but saying it was before that you were chronologically in the movie, and so yes, I, I was confused. I know, but you're not confused now because I just explained it. Hi, Paul. And I wanted to tell you at the time, you're wrong now because he wasn't being a jerk. He was just being a good husband. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. But luckily. It's a whole story since we didn't explain it. it well, hopefully you watch the movie. But like when her dad shows up at her son's party and and he, you know, is drunk and causing a scene and um, the uh, she's trying to like, get him to calm down and he says something about you know your mom said to throw that one back and and she thought that you know she had such a good re- relationship with her dad and yeah. so it was like really heartbreaking and and that's why her husband said he's not coming back here again yeah and also because he just made a big scene and scared all the kids <laughs> it's ridiculous like the scene he made like Come on, man. <laughs> he went a little far. And um, like I don't know. Is I, I guess his wife left her because... Left him. Left him because uh, she didn't want that relationship, like, in general, not just, like, him specifically. I guess, but I, I, I had the... It seemed like she had only left, like, 10 years, you know, before mm. that... Like, whenever they saw him when they were, one of them was still in college or something, mm-hmm. and she dr- dropped out, and it seemed like they had left, she had left, like, 10 years before. So, I guess that seems like a long time. It's hard to tell, but he was, like, very heartbroken over it. Yeah. But um, the other comment, which, well, I guess it's your time turn for a comment, because my comment led to that. Oh. Well, I didn't really have a lot of other comments. I just kind of was enjoying the movie, um, I didn't have a lot of like deep inspirational know, thoughts. insights. Insights by Colin. <laughs> TM. It's been trademarked. Well, um, what were your thoughts about the movie? Uh, uh well, the last thing is uh. uh Um, oh, 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 I put this movie makes me appreciate the strength I find in Colin. Because Colin's a strong willed person. She's stronger than she gives herself credit for. And I'm very appreciative to her. Uh, not just because it's Easter, but, and, you know, like, I mean, if you're going to count something, you know, saying I'm saying it today because of Easter. I'm not. Um, but normally I wouldn't attribute it to Easter. I'm just making the statement to make the statement. Now I'm just filling times by finishing the statement. Um, <laughs> is uh, the movie overall, I, I thought it was heartfelt, warming, sad, depressing, and funny at the same time. Well, it was a dramedy. Dramedy. Is that an actual word? Yes, it is. Okay. I thought... I thought I made it up, but I didn't. Does that go back to like Shakespeare? Like I didn't really think I made it up, but I mean, I said to Miles, I think this is a dramedy. And, and I'm used to her saying, it oh, it's a rom-com. Oh, it's a you know horror because she loves all those bloody, violent, horror, supervillain movies. Just, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. In fact, she thought the movie Supernova was a little too immature or aimed for immature audiences yes if you (laughs) if you listen to that podcast you'll know that's so true (laughs) anyway i i said i think this is a dramedy and then when we pulled it up it says comedy drama and i said hey look it is a dramedy yeah um i'm trying to think um oh well is oh you know, I, I know you got to suspend disbelief for these movies, but we're supposed to expect that this George, is it Georgie or George? Uh, what was it? 
Who? Which one? The magazine girl. Georgia. Georgia. Okay. It's like she has this big old, you know, like magazine thing going on and she gets to, you know, her father's wake. And I was just surprised that, you know, like her two sisters didn't call her out. That she stole, like, not no, 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 not the recipe, story. you know, New York Post, but no, the, the that, obituary. Yeah, that she started just talking about that instead of what she was supposed to talk about. <laughs> I have been at my father's side. Like, are there girls that conniving? Yes, this is what most families are made of. I don't want. And nobody got time for that. I mean, I I feel like that because it seems like when a parent passes away. That's when people show their true colors and fights ensue and, and everything. So, like, I don't know. Um, and what was it? Did I say that already? Appreciate. Oh, no, no, no. I did say that already. Um, overall, I mean, it, it was a good movie. It wasn't. You know, something that like off the, uh, if it was brand new at Blockbuster, I'd rent the video or the VHS tape. But if it was brand new at v- theater, I wouldn't see it. I feel like I had higher expectations and it didn't come through. It, But I feel like if I had seen this movie before and seen it many times during my life, I might have a different view yeah. on it. I might think, oh, this is such a cute movie. I love it. Because one of my favorite movies doesn't have good... One of my favorite dramedies... I wouldn't even say it's a dramedy. I'm not sure. One of my favorite movies from the holiday season uh-huh. is... You know, doesn't have good ratings online. Elf? But no. What? The holiday. Oh, uh, the holiday. It doesn't Who have cares? very good ratings. I'm the making a point. Great song. Miles, a great, um, one. Stop All interrupting. Right. I'm trying to make a point. One, that movie doesn't have good ratings online, but I really love it and I would give it a high percentage on this podcast. And so possibly if I had seen this movie before and I was, you know, Familiar oh. with it, I would think, oh, it's such a great movie. But I just, it didn't, it didn't hit, it didn't hit me very, like, oh, I love this movie. Yeah, the only way it hit me was like thinking about my mom, you know, in hospice, and you know, I'm like, the, you know. Yeah, but it wasn't the same thing at all. Yeah. So. Well, uh, nonetheless, is like I, I could identify with the loss of a parent, and, but. You know, other than that, it's not something that I would like go out of my way to you know watch. Although it was a adequate movie. Oh, one thing that I uh, realized is what is like generally for movies where they have individuals that are related. So in this one, the no, there wasn't. Yeah, the big up or the, the big T. The big T's. No, 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 no. What is it? Hold on, I gotta go back into my notes. It was, uh, isn't she great? Okay. 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 Is you see these individuals who are supposed to be related, all right? Mm -hmm. But their faces just do not match. You know, like um, the three main stars. I mean, yeah, some things, yes. But push the age aside and just looking at them, you know, they don't seem like they could be sisters. And um, like, because at least from what I've seen is, you know, like sisters generally share some relative, you know, like major f- functional face uh, shape, right? Well, I wouldn't know because maybe one sister got more of the father's genes and one got more of the mother's genes. But you'd expect them to share at least once. Because like, I well, felt... Well, I'm just saying, you know. like... I mean, the two of them had blonde hair. That's a characteristic. Um, like... Yeah. I, I just... I wouldn't know, you know because I don't have a sister, but I know that my brother and I, like, I look more like my mom and he looks more like my dad's side of the f- family. It could have been if he were, were a girl, he could have also looked more like my dad's side of the family. Yeah. We don't know. Well, what I'm getting at is... I just 
I found I it was constantly gnawing at me. Like like I I can appreciate the acting. Yeah. But I just at no point in the movie was sold like, yeah, these guys are absolutely sisters. Well, they weren't that close either, so Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that didn't help. Yeah, that didn't help. <laughs> but I don't think they cared if they looked alike. They were trying to cast big names at that time, I think. <laughs> Ridiculous. In the movie, are you looking at time? Yes. We've got, uh, yeah, we we got to wrap it up here in four minutes. Mm-hmm. So we have to grade it. I will give this a seventy even. I give this an eighty. Really? Why is that? Because it wasn't really. I mean, I know the dad was kind of inappropriate, but. This was rated PG-13. What are you talking about, dad being inappropriate? You just mentioned that before, but this was rated PG-13. It stuck to that. It wasn't, you know, super promiscuous. And it was just, you know, mostly on the up and up. Mostly say fun. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'd recommend it, you know, if you're looking something to watch. It's only 90 minutes. Yes. Only 90 minutes, unlike Titanic, which is three and a half hours long or more, maybe. I don't know. Enough to get on two VHSs. <laughs> and kids, if you don't know what that is, Google it. <laughs> VHS tapes. Ah, oh, man. They are selling, I'm sorry, did I guess they're selling the new Linkin Park um, song single? Um, um, oh my God, what is it? Friendly Fire on cassette tapes. Oh. I am so tempted to get one. Then you have to get something to play it in. I know, I know, I know. But anyways, <laughs> it would be interesting nonetheless. All right. Well, I think that is about all we have to say. Well, if you have any questions out there, you want to reach out to us, please leave a comment and let us know and we will answer your questions. And f- until next time, I'm Miles. And I'm Colin. And this has been You Ought to Watch This Movie, a podcast where we annoy you with our unbridled opinions on movies from the aughts. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to You Ought to Watch This Movie, a podcast about movies from the first decade of the 2000s, a.k.a. the aughts. Be sure to subscribe for new episodes covering movies you ought to watch. We'll see you next time.